So this uh, review is based on the small trading account, which has less than $25,000. Uh, so because of the account uh, being less than $25,000, this account falls under the pattern day trader rule, uh, commonly known under PDT, uh, which prohibits uh, day trading of the same stock more than twice. If you break that rule for a third trade, your account will be restricted for 90 days. So uh, looking here, uh, this account was funded back on June 9th with $2,000. And since, uh, since then, there's been no additional funds received. As uh, this is uh, as of uh, the last uh, adjust adjustment here, showing for October 5th of a penny. And uh, I don't know what that is. I think it's some sort of dividend or interest or something. Anyway, uh, because of this account being less than $25,000, as a consequence, this account does not receive real-time data. As noted up here in the top right, uh, top left corner, it says partially delayed data. And if I click on that, it says all stock and equity options data is delayed 20 minutes. However, futures and future options data is received real time. Now, this account does not qualify for futures trading. Uh, so the only reason I have to use the futures options is to track uh, the S&P 500 futures. Uh, that's the only thing I'll, I'll use the chart for. Uh, and speaking to the PDT role, I kind of got caught, well, I did get caught with a warning yesterday. So if I switch on uh, messages, uh, here's the message I received uh, regarding because I uh, bought and sold the SPY ETF. I traded it uh, multiple times yesterday, twice actually. So I kind of got caught here. So uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, until this account grows to over $25,000, this uh, partially del delayed data will uh, not drop off until then. So. That's it. Today's Sunday, October 22nd, and this is just a status check on a position I'm currently holding involving automatic data processing, commonly known under the ticker symbol ADP. I'm sure everyone knows who they are. Uh, and as of Friday's closing price, uh, the stock ended the week at $241.68. Uh, so this is the chart layout at the daily time frame. Each candlestick represents a day's worth of trading. This is the current candlestick right here for Friday, October 20th. Uh, the red vertical dash lines are monthly expiration Friday for monthly option contracts. So as uh, the market was heading into this expiration Friday, uh, I was anticipating a move to the downside. Considering that even though price has been ranging sideways after price hit a high of around $256 back in the uh, end of July. And since then, uh, price hasn't really broken any higher. Uh, it moved pretty much from its low back in May of around $210 uh, to a $40 move to the upside and has made two attempts to break above 256 and both attempts just went nowhere uh, however heading into October's expiration Friday uh, I was reviewing this stock chart and I was anticipating a move to the downside uh, considering the range bound between these two support resistance levels so what I did was approaching October 20th expiration Friday I did take a short position I didn't short the common shares I shorted via option contracts, specifically contracts that expires on November 3rd. And relative to the spot price on October 20, uh, October 18th, I selected the strike price of $225. And when I entered this trade, the stock price was quoted at $248.71. So essentially what this contract is saying at the time of my entry is that I'm anticipating that the stock price will be at or below $225 on or before November 3rd. Uh, so this line is just a visual markup as to where I took that short position. And since I entered this short, um, price has been trending to the downside. 
So heading into next week, uh, I'm anticipating that price may consolidate here at 237, similar to what happened over here. It spent a few days uh, trying to break below it, but held at support. So it respected this price level rather well before bouncing up to retest 250. However, I'm anticipating that heading into this week, uh, price may ultimately fail to hold support and fall below 237. So another um, markup I did was uh, I placed this chart right here. So using the bottom of this candlestick, uh, so using this bottom of the candlestick or this low of 244, I'm um, using that as an anchor point for this uh, channel right here. So I'm using the second anchor point as the low from this candlestick here as well. And if I move this accordingly, where the upper yellow band is acting as resistance, right? Because here price was getting rejected and then multiple touch points to break above, not just one resistance level, but two. We have the yellow, diagonal yellow, and the horizontal blue. So this was a strong rejection, right? So if price was able to break above that, Without a doubt, I would have thought that this price could have shot up to $300 because, again, it has to break above two strong resistance levels. But the fact that it was rejected, from my perspective anyway. Uh, so if price does come down and there's continuation to break below 237, then I'm looking for price to at least consolidate along the diagonal dash line here, which is also acting as a support level, support resistance level, because here we have a, a touch point here. And we have multiple touch points here where price was respecting this downtrend. So price could gradually start holding at support at 234, 232 level. However, I'm anticipating heading into October, price will break below this. So that was the general thesis for my bearish outlook for ADP heading into November. Um, so short term outlook, bearish, but long term, I think this is still a healthy company and price will eventually reverse back to the upside. Uh, but uh, specifically to this trade, switching over to the trade tab, uh, right here on the option chain, there's a flag position involving the November 3rd uh, expiration date, which will be expiring in 12 days. Uh, so right down here, to uh, the details. So I picked up four contracts. Uh, all four contracts will be expiring worthless in 12 days. And my average entry price per contract uh, was at $58. And fortunately, the trade is going in my direction as the premium is now quoted at $112.50 per contract. And the PL is reflecting a positive balance of $215 since entering this trade. And if I click on the trade confirm, uh, as a matter of fact, all four contracts were picked up at $58. And they were all done on October 18th. So this was one lot order for four contracts and each uh, of the respective PL are right here. So how options are quoted because here it's saying 58 cents, I'm quoting $58. So each option contract is essentially holding 100 shares of the underlying security, right? So the multiplier is 100. So you take the premium and you multiply that by 100 and that's the option price. So here we take 58 cents, multiply that by 100 or 100 shares. 100 shares per option contract. One contract is $58 times four contracts, not including commission. This is a $232 trade. So at risk, if I don't close this position out and the trade goes against me, uh, total max loss is $232. So that's how option premiums are quoted. So that's a general thesis again with, with uh, almost two weeks, a little over two weeks left in the trade. Uh, I'll go ahead and pause it here. I'll pick it up when something more significant does occur. Maybe when price, if it breaks below 232, I'll do a status check. Otherwise, I'll do a status check uh, next weekend. So until that update, more to follow. Today is Wednesday, October 25th, and this is a status check on an ADP trade. You can see here that there was a significant drop in price today. Uh, so as of the time of this recording, 
The spot price is $223.38. Uh, slightly uh, rallied a little bit, again, because this data is delayed. I'm actually keeping an eye on it on a, a more real-time quote. Uh, now that price is below my strike price, even though there's still uh, time remaining in the life of this trade, the fact that price is literally almost at support level, uh, I'm going to go ahead and capitalize on this move to the downside and close this position out. Uh, I'd like to close this out at 450. So you can see here that the quote or the premium is now at five dollars forty cents, and the PML is reflecting a positive balance of a little over nineteen hundred dollars. Uh, again, the data is delayed, and there has been a bit of a rally. So again, I want to protect as much capital. So what I'll do is I'll place a stop at, uh, let's see, four, because right now it's at 450. So let's see if we can do this at 450. Uh, closing at all four. So that's a profit potential of $1,700. So it's actually dropping a little bit more. There, sold it at 450. The position is now zero. So um, at 450, right? So that was 450 times 100. It's $450 per option contract. I picked up four. So that was a $1,800 gross. Um, so what I'll do is I'll provide a breakdown of the actual position, but I am out of this trade. I was able to capitalize on this move to the event side as I was anticipating. So overall, uh, a good setup. I was able to participate on this back here on October 18th, heading into expiration Friday and beyond. I was anticipating for this move to occur, which played out accordingly. So until the next setup, uh, I'll see you.